For my second foray into the Keychron mouse space, I took a look at this, the M6. Now it bears a lot of resemblance to one of the internet's favorite mice, the Logitech MX Master. And now in my first Keychron review, I fell in love with this tiny M4 mouse. Now combine that with the fact that the MX Master is probably my favorite mouse of all time, I had so much excitement jumping into testing this, which seemed like a perfect combination of both, and especially since this is half the price of the MX Master. Unfortunately, cutting to the chase, I was very disappointed. Let's talk about why. Beginning with build and design, this mouse looks great. It's got a clean, stealth, all black look that's very cool. It's also available in a similarly clean white look, which is only hindered by the fact that they used the same black scroll wheel, which I think was the wrong choice on an otherwise all white mouse. From the physical build, it's very similar to the MX Master in almost every single way. The materials though, are not quite as premium. Keychron seems to be using the same basic ABS plastic across all of their mice. On the smaller M4, this wasn't as much of a concern because you're just using your fingertips. But when you've got your whole hand touching an ergonomic mouse like this, the material quality comes much more to the forefront, and in this case, the cheap plastic feel really comes up short. The basic materials means that this mouse is extremely light. This was a big selling point on the M4, but again, it makes the bigger, more ergonomic shaped mouse actually feel cheap rather than super light and agile. There's truly a different market for a mouse like this, and I'm not sure that Keychron really thought that through. Instead, it seems like they just took a copy and paste of the same mouse across every single shape they could think of. However, super light is not always the way to go, especially since this shape of mouse is very unlikely to be on the top of your list for the next gaming mouse purchase. This mouse also has the same smooth gliding materials on the bottom that I talked a lot about in my M4 review. As a result, this mouse does glide very smoothly, but since it's not small and nimble, it doesn't feel as impressive. It just kind of feels nice. But enough about what this mouse is trying to be, but is not, this is an ergonomic mouse. So how does it do with that? In a word, bad. Even though this looks a lot like the MX Master, it's really a failed attempt at ergonomics as far as I'm concerned. The biggest issue is with this top ridge through the middle. It's too tall and too steep, for my hand to be comfortable at least. It feels very awkward. It's like they couldn't fully commit to whether your palm should be down, in which case the angle is too steep and my fingers can't get in the right place, or if my fingers should be the priority, in which case my palm and wrist wind up off the table. The only way that it works for me is this weird middle of the road grip that's not comfortable for me. I've got a very average sized hand, so I would expect that this would be pretty similar for a lot of people out there. I actually think that this mouse might work best for people with larger hands, but it's tough for me to fully validate that hunch. If you've got any first-hand experience that could be helpful to others, please leave a comment down below. When you're using the mouse, it has all the buttons that you would hope for in a top-of-the-line productivity mouse. On the side, there are forward and back buttons, plus a side scroll wheel, just like on the MX Master. There's a main scroll wheel that even features tilt options to be able to scroll side to side, and there's a button on top to switch between tactile line-by-line -line scrolling and free scrolling that Keychron calls an infinite scroll. Sounds like a pretty good lineup. But unfortunately, I've got issues up and down this list as well. Starting on the side, the forward and back buttons are fine, but they sound inconsistent. The back button must hit on a hollow spot because it's much louder than the forward button. So here's the forward button, and then here's the back button. It's nitpicky, I know, but it can be annoying. The side scroll wheel, thankfully, isn't annoyingly loud, but it's somewhat impractical, at least for me. It's slightly too high for my thumb to use it comfortably. It's got too much resistance and not enough grip, so pressing too lightly, you won't spin it, and pressing firmly, I wind up picking up the mouse, which is a bit of a mess when you're using it. Moving on to the top of the mouse, if there is one single worst thing about this mouse, it is the main scroll wheel. Just listen to it, come on, it's obnoxious. What the heck? Who's, who thought that was a good idea? 
The individual tactile movements of the scroll wheel are very large and much more violent than most other scroll wheels I've used. Now that's a weird word to use to describe something like this, but it just makes these large, seemingly abrupt movements when you're scrolling and it's unpleasant. Because each movement is so large, it takes a lot of movement to scroll down a page. It's the exact opposite experience I had on the M4 where the scroll wheel was so small that it felt like it went super far relative to the amount of movement that your finger did. It's just kind of a mess. The main scroll wheel does support side tilt, which Keychron describes as precise click-to-click -click horizontal scrolling. In testing, this movement is so small it's actually useless. I'm going to show some b-roll right now to show you just how tiny these movements are. Since this isn't a supported mouse feature on common operating systems, I don't think there is a way to adjust it either. There's also no way to hold it down to scroll more quickly, so unless you have a specific challenge that requires extremely precise side-to-side -side movements, I don't think you'll use this side tilt very much. All of that is pretty bad, but we press on with functionality and features where we thankfully encounter some of the positives that this mouse has to offer. You can use the M6 with either Mac or Windows, and it supports a multi-device Bluetooth connection, a 2.4 gig USB connection, as well as wired operation. The wired mode uses the front-facing USB-C port, and the included USB-C to USB-C cable is the same cable that I gushed about in the M4 review. It's basically a shoelace. It's so flexible, I love it. They do also provide an adapter to connect to a USB-A port if needed. As mentioned, Bluetooth allows for multi-device with up to three different devices and is adjustable with a button on the bottom of the mouse. Notably, this is not something offered on the M4, which does show a bit of tailoring of this product for the productivity audience. Hooray! More of that in the next version, please, Keychron. If you want to use the included USB receiver, your connection varies depending on whether you purchase the 1000 Hz or 4000 Hz version. I've got the 1000 Hz version here, which I'd say is more than enough for productivity users. As I mentioned, this is likely not your next gaming mouse, and so 4000 Hz even being an option feels a bit odd. When using the USB receiver, you can toggle between polling rates using a button on the bottom of the mouse. This toggles between 125 Hz, which is the only option on Bluetooth, plus 500 and 1000 Hz, with 1000 being the default option on your 2.4 gig connection or your wired connection. You can also adjust DPI on the bottom of the mouse, jumping to five different presets between 400 and 5000 DPI, but you can use the Keychron Engine software to adjust these intervals to whatever you'd like, as high as 26000 DPI. A cool aspect of the M6 model is that they provide USB receivers for both USB-A and USB-C, and not just an adapter, two actual receivers. This makes it more easily compatible with Macs and other modern machines. They also provide an adapter to allow you to put this USB receiver closer to your mouse to cut down on latency. If you get that 4000 Hz model, this is required as it uses a different keyboard shaped receiver, which must be plugged in. But on the 1000 Hz model, it's optional if you want to do this to cut down on latency as much as possible. When deciding which polling rate to use, battery life is a big consideration. The M6 has an 800 milliamp hour battery, but Keychron makes some confusing battery life claims. They quote 80 hours of use at 1000 Hz on my model, but they estimate 120 hours of use at 1000 Hz on the 4000 Hz model. I'm not sure why the same 800 milliamp hour battery would get such different results at the same polling rate, if anyone has insights on that front, drop them in the comments. In my personal use, the battery life was respectable and didn't seem to stray too far from those estimates. However, based on the fact that I didn't have a great experience using this mouse, it didn't exactly get months and months of testing that some other mice on my channel have gotten. I truly wanted to get this thing off my desk sooner rather than later. In terms of value and pricing, you can get the 1000 Hz M6 for $50 plus shipping and the 4000 Hz version for $70 plus shipping. This does make it half the price of the $100 MX Master, which obviously makes it interesting if you're on a budget. And I will 100% admit that this mouse has a lot of positive aspects. There are differentiators like the stealth look, the lightweight design, the smooth gliding, multi-device Bluetooth, 
high polling rates, easy DPI adjustment, and great accessories. However, I cannot get past the deal breakers. The cheap materials stand out, the shape feels like a failed attempt at ergonomics, at least for my hand size, and the scroll wheel is just loud and obnoxious and quite frankly, it sucks. In the end, despite all of the differentiators and the fact that I really, really, really wanted to like this mouse based on my unexpected love for the Keychron M4, I cannot and do not recommend it overall. So tell me, is there another ergonomic productivity mouse other than the MX Master that I should review? Let me know in the comments. And if you haven't already, check out my review for this Keychron M4 mouse. It will guaranteed help restore your faith in Keychron mice since it is truly great. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing as we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of this year. I appreciate you all and I will see you in the next one.